Hi Lifetime Moms, I'm Dara Torres and this is my new book Gold Medal Fitness and it's a five week program to help you guys get into shape. Uh, it's thrilling to meet you because I did read your first book and I read about how you reinvented, you know, you really came back, you had your career early on and then did it again and and, I, and stretching played a lot, a big role in that. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about that and how obviously that led to, to this. Well, I knew if I was going to do something special in the pool that I had to have special people working with me. and. Um, I hired a great strength and conditioning coach who helped me do innovative things in, in the weight room, which wasn't all about heavy lifting because heavy lifting doesn't always equate to being the strongest in the pool. It's more about being efficient in the weight room. And I also needed someone to help me with stretching because I knew it was important. I knew it was good to do before and after training. But more importantly, I needed to do it for recovery, which was a big word in my training, being a little bit older and trying to do what I wanted to do. So um, I, I met up with uh, two stretchers named Ann and Steve, and they have a method called Kihara stretching, which um, brings energy to the core, and it's basically resistance stretching. And it's just awesome because I do it especially after I train, and it feels like it just gets all the tension and lactic acid out of my body. Mm -hmm. And what I love is that I'm, I have a hard time with yoga. I can't, my, my mind can't leave to another planet or whatever. Right. So this is just, this I like because it's sort of somewhere in between. Yeah, it is. It's, um, you, the great thing about it is you're not just stretching because um, if you just stretch and you don't add any resistance in it, you're not getting the best possible stretch that you can get. Um, and so the resistance really helps. And the other thing is, with this type of stretching, you're not just stretching one muscle, you're stretching a lot of different muscles at once. And that's very important because what I do as far as swimming goes, you're not just using your arm to swim, you're using a lot of different muscles at once. So I wanted to do something that would equate to what I was doing in the pool. Mm -hmm. And now, and how old is your daughter now? My daughter is four, Tessa's four years old now. And, and so what is she getting into in terms of, do you see that spark of the, the, the athlete in her already? Well, when she was about two and a half, three years old, she was already racing me into the kitchen saying she had to be first. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I, I asked my mom, I said, did I do that at that age? She's like, no. And I'm like, oh great. You know, she's like double what I am. So, and I'm very competitive. So I think it's something that's just kind of from within, but I have her in a bunch of different sports. At one point she was in five sports, now she's in four. She's in um, tennis, swimming, gymnastics, and dance. And she tends to sort of lean towards the girly stuff with the tutus and everything like that, which is very different for me because I'm a tomboy. Um, but I have her doing that stuff because I didn't want her coming home and just sitting in front of a TV set and watching TV. And I figured she can go and do something for about an hour after school. That's much better for her. So, And she really enjoys it. She hangs out with her friends and she learns about structured sports. Mm -hmm. And in terms of obviously as she gets older, I mean, you know the amount of hours that goes into it to mm -hmm. become that. Do you think that as now, knowing now what you've been through, would you want to be able to want your daughter to pursue that if she wanted it? You know, my daughter can pursue whatever she wants to pursue. I'll be behind her. You know, uh, I don't think I'll still be swimming to the point where you'll see her and I on the, on the uh, you know, stands together getting ready for a race. But, um, but you know, I'll support whatever she decides to do. I mean, I'm very lucky that I had uh, parents that guided me and didn't push me in what I was doing. That's great. And the last thing is for, especially for women moms who kind of have forgotten about themselves as they're raising kids, what is your advice about still doing what you love? How do you, how do you strike that balance or how do you really focus on your passion? You know, I really look to working parents as role models for me to try to figure out how to find a balance with doing what I love and also being a great parent to my daughter. But you also have to realize that you have to have a life too and you have to be able to do some stuff for yourself and I think that makes you more of a sane parent when you do that. So when I go out there and, and I'm like, okay, you know, I got the sitter, I'm going to go work out or do my thing, you know, you feel a little guilty leaving your, your daughter but you know you're doing it for you and I want her when she grows up to realize that she should be able to do that too.